All right, I'm going to show you how to give the ground state electron configuration of an element. There's three rules that you want to follow when you're doing this. One, electrons are going to fill up orbitals in order of increasing energy, starting with the uh, lowest s orbital, and then they're going to move up from there. So um, there's a certain pattern that they fill up orbitals in. You can see, based on this sort of graph you can draw, it's uh, almost like a stair pattern. Um, you're going to start here in the upper right and go diagonally down to the left starting with your 1s orbital which I've shown here and then you're going to continue this pattern from the upper right to the lower left to your 2s orbital and then to your 2p orbital here and then when you hit the next s orbital you're going to go to the next electron energy level which is your 3s orbital and on and on and I wrote a chart over here up to the 4p orbital uh, and that's all I need to go but you can keep on going based on this uh, this pattern right here so your second step is uh, according to the Pauli exclusion principle electrons fill up orbitals in pairs that spin in opposite rotations so for each orbital you're going to have two electrons and they're going to be facing in opposite directions denoted by these arrows. The third rule is that when you're filling up equal energy orbitals uh, such as the p orbitals or the d orbitals electrons are going to fill these orbitals up one at a time in the same uh, and they're going to be spinning in the same direction uh, before you go back and fill up the second electron that's spinning in the opposite direction. So this right here, excuse me, this right here is a higher energy state than this right here. So obviously we want to have the lowest energy possible and that happens when you have these uh, similarly rotating electrons in all of the orbitals. So just to recap, electrons, rule number one is that electrons fill up orbitals in order of increasing energy, starting with the lowest energy first. The second rule is electrons are going to fill up orbitals, two, two per orbital, spinning in opposite rotations. And then lastly, when you have orbitals that are the exact same energy level, they're going to fill up one at a time spinning in the same rotation direction. All right, so let's start with an example. I'll start with the simplest element first, and that's hydrogen. So we know from our periodic table here that hydrogen's in the upper left. We got one proton, one electron. So we only have to fill up one electron worth of orbitals. Um, so we're going to start with the lowest energy possible, and that's the 1s orbital. And we'll write one electron going in one direction, just like that. So this would be a completed ground state electron configuration for hydrogen right here, just this 1s orbital with one electron in it. Now, if we wanted to go into the more complex uh, elements such as carbon which we're going to be working with a lot in organic chemistry you're just going to follow those three rules as you go up so carbon has six electrons again according to your periodic table so the second electron according to the second rule is going to go here spinning in the opposite direction as the other so now you have two oppositely spinning electrons in the one s orbital then there's another orbital, your next 2s orbital. You add one electron, and then another electron spinning in the opposite direction. So we have four so far. And now the 2p orbital, remember your third rule, you don't want to add them all in one area because this is a higher energy, and that's not what you want. What you want to do is you want to add your first electron spinning in one direction, and then go to the next orbital and add the next electron spinning in the same direction. 
So this is what your carbon would look like. So there's two, four, and six electrons, and this is the lowest energy state. This is the ground state for carbon, ending right here. All right, and even more complex than that, a molecule, sorry, an element like arsenic is uh, it's going to look a lot more complex, but if you just follow these rules, it's really... Uh, really basic. Um, you're going to continue from here. Arsenic is down here on the periodic table. It has 33 electrons. So we're going to fill up these orbitals. Lowest energy first, going up to higher energies. So we have six so far based on carbon. Uh, and we're just going to keep adding from here to reach the arsenic configuration. So there's one more. I finished filling out the p orbitals, so now I can go back and I can finish the second electron spinning in the opposite direction. So p orbitals are done. Now I can move up here to the s orbitals. And these two spinning in opposite directions. Move up to the next step. Fill in one each, spinning in the same direction and finish them off with another electron spinning in opposite direction. Keep on going. Now we have the d orbital. Same rules apply. You just have five orbitals here, so this is going to be a 10 by the time we're done here with the d orbitals. And the second oppositely rotating electron. All right, so we have 30 so far up to here at this point. And 33 electrons is where arsenic, what arsenic has. So the final electron shell, based on our third rule, we're going to fill one at a time with one electron spinning in the same direction for a total of 33 total electrons. So that is it for ground state electron configuration. If you want to follow me as I create more of these videos, be sure to subscribe or visit my blog, which I'm going to link in the info section. If you want to make a donation to help me out, uh, you can do that via PayPal to mcencdb at yahoo.com uh, if you want to see this project continue on, which I would like to continue on as well. So good luck with your classes, your tests, whatever you're working on.